There's so much that are hidden behind clothing, especially in the fashion industry, that to be able to bring that out and in front and, and feature it, feature the thing that, that is more invisible, was something that came along when I was able to think through what was important. I think when people see a show, an, an exhibition of works, this series really requires, in my opinion, a viewer to see a good quantity of the work, and often in person, the, the scale of the prints. Because once you see a good, a good amount of the work, things start to break down that wouldn't when you, when you, you know, encounter one or two, or especially seeing something online where you can quickly consume and dispose of it. At some point, you stop worrying about what each person, what kind of experience they might have had, what, what brought them to that place that's caused the physical uh, trauma. It, it, you start to move into the realm and into the language of this, the moments that are in between where meaning breaks down. Because as you know, life is a very big and broad thing to try to speak for, and, and confrontations with mortality, I mean, it's, they're big themes, and so I don't think it can be taken in quickly. I really wanted to photograph a woman with anorexia, which I was able to do, and then a breast cancer survivor was incredibly important as well because it's an attempt to make explicit what's real. And in the context of advertising, there's something called the imaginary body. It's the body that's not subject to death, and we all have it. In the context of advertising and fashion, fantasy is required. It's what makes us it appealing, it's something that we cannot be, it's that thing that we are not, but we long for, sort of immortality, safe. It's a sort of perfection that, that is very appealing and it's very comforting. And fantasy is hugely important. It's part of our drive and our desire. It's what keeps us continuing forward because if desire is satisfied, then it's no longer desire. It's only what is unsatisfied. For Gail, for example, to, to make the decision not to have reconstructive surgery, I know that it was just presumed that she would. There was almost no question, um, I think, in the medical field's mind that that is just something that she would naturally do. But to make that choice, that having to show up with just with the elegance that Gail does, the elegance of spirit and personality and vulnerability, that's the, the greatest gift of life, is to be able to share on that higher level with your, yourself, with other people. After having children um, that were very ill and having cancer, and my mom and my sister having cancer, and my father passing away, I just, there was something that just said, I need to be doing what, life is too short, I need to be doing what I really want to be doing. I got rid of color years ago because I wanted to talk about or feel, have the tactile and structural and texture, everything, all, every experience except the emotion of color. And now I have this amazing kid, she's blind, who's experiencing clothing the way I've always wanted to experience it. I had my um, art twins at age 47. They were born three months early with congenital toxoplasmosis, which is a parasite that affects the eyes and the brains. And we had heard that my daughter would never walk, talk, stand, be able to function on her own. And that my son would be able to read and write and drive, but he has a scar on one eye. Everything I do and everything I think my husband and I do in our lives is, is reinforced by our children and how amazing they are and just waking up every morning with them and being happy to see them and how they take in the world. I remember sitting at the kitchen table and I got the call and I cried for a minute and Evan walked in and I was crying and I said, I have cancer and he said, okay, we're gonna do what we always do. 
we're going to take care of this. <laughs> and I just said, yep. And I said, I can do this. I mean, my kids have been through so much more than I will even have to go through. I mean, I went through five surgeries. I went through, you know, chemo, lost my hair and everything. And then a month later, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. And a month after that, my sister was diagnosed with cancer. We were in People Magazine. Handling trouble is something you just have to do. Everybody has to do that. We do seem to get more than our fair share, and I hope it isn't being thrown at us because we're getting better at handling it, because of course you don't get better, you just get experienced. I can't say I enjoy dealing with trouble, but it is something we've had to do, and it's something we may have to keep doing. When you have a family and you've got passion for whatever creativity or life that's just you just don't doubt you just move through I think that it's an intense encounter with something that we really don't want to confront when you've had the experience that my subjects have gone through you you earn a capacity to live in a much more whole way we don't learn anything if, if life doesn't give us difficulties. It's only the traumatic things that we remember, you know, on the smallest scale. It's the difficulties we encounter that, that make us grow. I don't have anything on them. They are, they are my betters. They teach me how to live.